One of the most beautiful places you'll learn something about parenting in the Qur'an will be Surat Yusuf. And within Surat Yusuf, specifically Ya'qub alayhi salam. All over the Qur'an, he is mentioned as a role model parent. Ya'qub alayhi salam is mentioned as a role model parent. You know, Yusuf alayhi salam, young boy, sees a dream. You all know the story, right? Young boy, he sees a dream. It disturbs him. Who does he go talk to in the Qur'an? He goes to talk to his dad. You ever see a teenage boy, 12 year old, 13 year old, 11 year old even, maybe 9, 10, sees a dream, something bothered him. First person he goes to talk to is his dad. Anything small goes wrong in your life, especially a boy. And you say, maybe I should talk to dad about this. Is that what you normally do? If it's a really big problem, maybe you'll go talk to your mom. And when you do, the first thing you'll tell her is, don't tell dad. But, and then you'll talk about whatever it is you have to talk about. The fact that Yusuf alayhi salam went and spoke to his father is already teaching fathers a huge deal. He has some kind of relationship with his child by virtue of which no matter how disturbed the child may be and the problem may be big or small in this case the problem isn't even a matter of reality it's a matter of a dream but whatever problem comes up I should be able to talk to my dad no matter what I should be able to talk to him my daughter, my, my, my eldest, when she was in preschool she goes to preschool, she comes home one day and she comes and she's, yes, she's like three and a half, four years old she comes home, she goes to me, Abba Yusuf is so funny. There's some kid named Yusuf in the class. He saw him, was like, who's Yusuf? <laughs> Tell me everything you know. Who's Yusuf? <laughs> and my wife saw it from a corner of her eye. And she goes, uh, Naman, can I talk to you for a second? And I came over and said, what is it? She goes, you stay quiet. <laughs> and she took her and she, and then she talked, my wife talked to me later. She said, listen, you don't think your child can see that you're getting upset? I was like, yeah, I'm sure she could. If she sees that she, you're getting upset, next time, when it comes to telling you anything about what happens in class, will she open her mouth or keep it shut? She'll keep it shut. She won't say anything. She's gonna hide things from you. And it'll be your fault. Because you look like you got upset. It's entirely your fault. You can't close that door on her. You have to just listen. It's harmless, she's three years old, four years old, what's the big deal? Relax, calm down. Especially fathers guys, especially fathers. You come home from a long day of work, you sit home and all you want to do is nothing. You just want to watch TV, flip the channels, watch news, watch where the, you know, the, the Dow Jones industrial average. You want to check what's going on in the world, even though you won't remember any of it, nor do you care, but this is your form of entertainment. And your kid comes over, your five-year-old comes over. Dad, look what I made. Look what I did. Dad, play with me. Come on, let's do something. Let's play tag. And they're talking to you, talking to you, talking to you. What are you doing? Could you leave me alone? I'm trying to watch the news. And you'll call my... Can you... Hey, Fatima! Can you get rid of him, please? I just came home from work. I need some peace. I don't need to hear this. Don't you have toys I bought you? Go play with those. Same child, 10 years later. He's 15 years old, and you're picking him up from school, and you say, So, son, how was your day? I don't know. <laughs> What'd you do? I don't know. <laughs> Did you talk to any friends? Maybe. Where are you going to go later? Somewhere. What are you going to do? I don't know. They won't talk to you. And then you come, my, come tell the Imam, you know, the, my kid doesn't talk to me. Yeah, you didn't talk to him. You didn't talk to him all this time. You didn't have time. You didn't create a relationship first. How is it going to just come out of nowhere? It doesn't. And those are the ages, by the way, 10, 11, 12, 13. Those are the critical ages. At those ages, you know, before then, parent, children are most obsessed with making their parents proud. Doesn't even matter what religion you're from. This is just pure psych child psychology. Young children just want to make their parents proud. They want to show their parents what they've done. The biggest source of influence to them is their parents. There's some serious trouble headed your way. I bring up Surat Yusuf because at a young age he's already showing respect and open communication. That's critical for both parent and child. How many of us are having dinner every night with our children? 
And when you do sit and have dinner, how many of us are actually talking to our kids? Actually talking to our kids. You know, in the age of cell phones and texting and all this other stuff and cognitive dissonance, you can't even carry a real conversation with another human being, let alone your children. But we have to become good listeners, especially the fathers. Especially the fathers. The, the, the moms naturally, Allah has given them certain gifts. Like parenting comes more naturally to a mother. Allah has given her that gift. He just makes her nurturing, soft, caring, concerned. Just naturally. Fathers have to work on it. You're sitting at home, your child falls down. Who gets up immediately? Who does that? The father? The father's sitting there, go, pick yourself up, child. <laughs> Dust it off. Nothing, nothing. That's nothing. Don't worry about it. That's a little bit of blood. That's... The mom will go crazy. It's natural to her. I'm telling the fathers here, if we want our children to be raised in Islam, the first thing we need to be is their best friend. And that takes work. It takes serious work. Parents here, fathers here, you, but you guys have to get in shape. I'm serious, you have to get in shape. Not for yourself, for your kids. You're, you come home, your kids want to play with you. And you just, Abba, pick me up, throw me around, do this. You do a little bit of that and you're like, <gasps> Abba's got to lie down, hold on. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's not how you raise kids. You know, taking our kids hiking, playing sports with them, taking them to the backyard. Even if they're playing video games, play video games with them. Play with them. You know, play the Wii with them. Bowl with them. I don't care. Just st do stuff with your kids. It's a critical part of opening barriers. So they can talk to you about anything. Because I'm telling you, when they reach a certain age, the need to talk to someone will always be there. You would rather that person be you not some non-Muslim friend who will give non-Muslim kinds of advice. Last comment I'll make with you. Yaqub alayhi salam's sons messed up pretty bad. They didn't just mess up his car, right? They didn't just break the kitchen sink. They didn't do some minor damage. They left the, their brother in the woods. That's pretty big. These guys come into the house before Yaqub alayhi salam showing him a fake blooded shirt. What does he do? I, you know what I was expecting? If you don't know the story and you get to that point, you're like, oh, this is gonna be bad. These guys are gonna get it. What comes next? Fasabrun Jamil. I'm just gonna find beauty and patience. When I read that as a father, I could not understand it. He knows they're lying, he says, I'm gonna have sabr. Why? The question is, why did Quran tell us that? It's a really important question. Because he's a really, really, really intelligent father. We learned that from the beginning of the surah. He knows his kids very, very well. They haven't even planned against Yusuf yet, but he said, watch out, they might plan against you. Did he call it? He called it like a play. He called it, because he knows his kids. So he also knows there are times when yelling at your children will make things worse. And the only thing you can do is patience. This is one of those times. Yelling at them will not do any good. The only thing left is patience. Sabrun Jameel. There's an age your children reach where all you can do is have sabr and make lots and lots and lots of dua. And then somebody will come up to me at the end of the speech and say, Brother, I've been doing sabr. It's been like three days I've been doing sabr. Nothing has changed. <laughs> you can't put a timer on your sabr, guys. Yaqub alayhi salam has sabr. Does it pay off eventually? Do those kids eventually come around by Allah's grace? They do, right? Does it happen the next week? Six months from then? A year from then? Two years from then? Ten years from then? It happens a while later, right? Just trust Allah and have sabr at a certain point. These are some basic teachings of Allah's book. These aren't just stories. These are the best of all stories. Why? Because every little bit of this story has things that makes my life better.